The Girl Who Married the Moon, a traditional story from Kodiak Island. Produced by the Aleutic Museum, the Kodiak Island Borough School District, with support from the First Nations Development Institute. Once, long ago, when Alutic people lived in sod houses and traveled the world by kayak, a girl and her cousin fell in love with the moon. Every evening when the moon shone his lovely light upon their village, the girls went to the beach. Sitting beneath the shelter of a kayak, they spent the night staring lovingly at the changing shape of the moon. Help me move the kayak. I can't move it myself. Look, he's way over there now. As the moon moved, the girls moved their shelter, following his journey across the sky. Every night as they gazed at the moon, each girl claimed that she would be his wife. I love the moon. I'm going to marry the moon. Every morning, when the girls returned to their home, their parents questioned their behavior. Where have you been? What were you doing? They asked. The girls replied that they watched the moon until dawn, when he left the sky. Kuyana, kuyana. One evening, the girls were playing on the beach with their friends. As night fell, the young people returned to their homes, but the girls remained to enjoy the glowing moonlight. As they watched the sky, however, the moon disappeared. He had not dipped behind a cloud, nor had he passed below the mountains, for it was still nighttime. He was simply gone. Disappointed, the girls began to complain. Where is he? Nani kina. Nani ikhaluk. Nakhluaka. A voice interrupted their bickering. I'm right here. And suddenly, the moon appeared before them. The girls gasped. Standing on the beach was a handsome young man wearing a dark mask. Startled, the girls began to fix their hair nervously, but the moon spoke calmly. Yes, I love you. No, I love you. Angered, the cousins glared at each other. The moon laughed at their quarrel and explained that he needed a patient girl for his wife, one that could bear the hard work he must complete each day. He offered to test the girls to see who was the most patient. I will take the one who is more patient. Close your eyes. As they closed their eyes, the moon walked up to the girls and wrapped his hands around their long, dark hair. Holding one girl in each hand, he rose swiftly into the sky, taking the young women with him. One of the girls could not keep her eyes closed and peeked just a little. At that moment, she fell from the moon's grasp, loosing her hair and tumbling down, down, down. She landed safely on the beach below. The other girl, who was more patient, kept her eyes tightly shut. In the morning, she found herself in a comfortable sod house. It was the moon's home. This is my house. That chick behind it is my storehouse. Please don't go in it. For many days, the patient girl lived happily as the moon's wife. The moon often slept during the day and worked during the night, but he also left the house at many other times. He was gone often, leaving the girl alone never offering to take her on his travels or explain his work. Each time he left, the moon wore a different mask. After a time, the girl became lonely and sad. She did not understand where her husband went and why he left her behind. Some days the girl wept. Other days she was angry. She begged her husband to give her a job or to let her help him with his work, but he refused. I talk to my Oh why? Enough. Enough. I have had enough of this. You go out at all hours and leave me here. I am lonely. I have hard work to do. If it's so hard, why can't I help? I could do it, 
and then I can see my cousin. No, you can't help. It's my job to take care of you. What's my job then? Can't you find something to do? Fine. I'll find something to do up here. Her unhappiness upset him, so he agreed that she should leave their home to explore the sky world as she pleased. He made just one request. Okay, but don't go into that chick shawak there. He asked her to never enter his storehouse, a sod house that lay a short distance behind their home. That evening at sunset, the moon and his wife left their home. He too traveled the night sky, and she too explored the sky world. As she walked through the sky, the girl discovered numerous paths. Following a path, she soon came to a crossroads, a place where many paths met. She chose one and followed it to the very end. Here she found a man lying down with his face in a cloud. Thrilled to see another person, she greeted him warmly. Chamai, Chamai, hey, talk to me. But the man did not respond. He did not even move. She tried again, shaking the man. Chamai, hey, talk to me. This time the man shooed her away, motioning for her to leave with his hand, but never looking up. So the girl went back to the crossroads and chose another path, and then another and another. At the end of each path she found a man with his head in the clouds who refused to speak to her or even look at her. She became frustrated. At the end of the last path she decided to be much bolder. She ran up to the man she found lying there and kicked him. As the man looked up a flash of light surrounded the girl. In the center of his forehead was one large brightly glowing eye. The one-eyed man stared at the girl angrily and then spoke. Can't you see I am working? Working at what? Lighting the sky. Yes. You are all stars? Yes. Achyat. What are you? I am married to Echaluk. Married to the moon. Well, stop kicking the stars. Now, excuse me. Wait, can you see my cousin? But it was too late for her question. The star had already buried his face in the clouds. With sadness, the girl walked home. On her way, she neared her husband's storehouse. She knew she couldn't look inside, but it was tempting. Why should her husband have secrets from her? She opened the door and slipped into the cool, dark storehouse. In the far corner of the room, a curtain of woven grass hung from the wall. Tiny glimmers of light shone from beneath its edges. Curious, she pulled back the curtain. Hanging on the wall were the most beautiful masks she had ever seen, each in a different moon shape. There was a full moon, half moon, quarter moon, and many crescent moons. The mask of the nearly full moon was particularly lovely. After admiring it for some time, the girl lifted it to her face. The mask made her feel pretty, but when she tried to take it off, it would not budge. She pulled and pulled, but she could not free the mask from her face. Scared of her husband's anger, she ran home and buried herself in bed, the mask still covering her face. When the moon came home the following morning, he found his wife in bed, covered by her bearskin blanket and in pain. Chamai, what is the matter? Why are you in bed? My face hurts. Hinan? Yes, my face. Pulling the blanket off his wife, the moon discovered that one of his masks was stuck to her face. Although the girl expected him to be angry, for she had deceived her husband and entered his storehouse, he was kind and helpful. He took the mask off her face and handed it back to her. You are so pretty. But I am so bored. I need something to do. The stars won't play. You always work. You want to work? I want to. And I want to see my cousin. The moon took a moment to consider his wife's request. He looked at the beautiful mask in her hands and at her beautiful face. And then he offered to share his job. Since you chose this one, you wear it. From now on, I'll begin the month and go around until the full moon, and you'll finish it. We will share the hard work. I like that. Since that day, there have been two moons, a husband and wife who share the hard work of lighting the night sky. The husband begins each month, working until the time of the full moon. Then his wife takes her turn, traveling the sky so her beloved husband can rest.
Don't 